you've got to remember that you're not merely writing for children, you're writing for the unfortunate people, uh, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, grandfathers, grandmothers, who've got to read the children, the, the stories aloud. Not just once, but over and over and over again. they've actually made a few small improvements since last season. Like, did you know that there isn't a fantasy sequence in every single episode this time? I'm serious, they are still in there and all of them are still filler, but some episodes don't have them at all. It's like they have finally figured out how to write 7 minute long stories and not 6 minute ones with a blob of filler clumped in. And something that really surprised me is that there are only 5 international episodes this season, one set in each established country. Literally, the rest of them are Sodo episodes. Not even any of the double-length episodes are international. That I was not expecting from this series, since the international stuff, while completely pointless, was still the driving force for the rebrand in the first place. The Brazilian one is about two wood-fueled engines wanting to see Rio, but realizing that they were built to only work on their small railway. The bit generic. The Italian one is just a bad luck episode. It's as predictable as you may think it is. The Australian one is about Thomas bumping into Ace again, and instead of being cross to see him after all the shit Ace made him do in the Boaba movie, he gladly helps him get over his fear of wild animals to do a stunt performance. A bit lackluster, but it is developing on something established in the movie, so... Okay, the Indian one is about Shankar, the stern brown ivory color, showing us that he doesn't like being watched by others, especially in a costume. It's interesting to see sight of a character I thought was just a forgettable one-note background character. Also, Ashima looks way too over-decorated here. She already was on her own, but this is just overkill. And, I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth, the Chinese one, Yongbao and the Tiger, is the only good international episode. I'm serious, it's a good episode. It's nice to hear the backstory and the origins of one of the foreign engines, and it's a pretty decent one too. Well, I mean, yeah, it's basically Thomas's growth from The Adventure Begins all over again, but at least it's good growth. I just don't know why it's taken them this long to adapt this story into the TV show. The episode is adapting an animated short from 2018 for the Chinese release of The Great Race. This story was made for the Boaba series, and it only took them until now, the final international episode ever made, to adapt it? And god damn it, why couldn't we hear the backstory of any of the other international engines? How Hong Mei got her number one, the first time Shane met Aubrey and Aiden, the acts that rewarded Rajiv with his oh so important crown, what made Raul so competitive even before the Great Railway Show. That would have made more interesting episodes than Thomas making a hit era style screw up or making my ears bleed. But before we tackle the Sodor episodes, let's talk about the songs first. Get them out of the way. First up is Party Train. While it was interesting seeing new exclusive animation here, plus reanimating a scene from Journey Beyond Sodor with the season 23 Thomas model, 
It's still generic as hell. Next, how does it work? I don't like this. I do not like this. I don't like the singing. The explanations for these inventions are too shallow, even for a song like this. And half of the song is Ruth explaining things, not really singing it. Fall is so much fun. It's... Okay, I like the soothing tone, but the things they talk about in the lyrics have nothing to do with Thomas. The little engine who believed. The same opinions, but with a Christmas song. Though I do like how the pitch raises in the second half. And the final song? New Year's Day for Thomas. Bland, generic, forgettable, I am done reviewing songs. Now, with the fact that the remaining 18 episodes are set on Sodor, that means that they will be better and more purposeful than before, right? Well... no. Not quite. While I think that there are some episodes I thought were decent, like The Great Little Railway Show, Nia and the Unfriendly Elephant, Nia's Bright Idea, Sunny Second Chance, and Gordon and Rebecca coming through, the rest were either really boring, uninteresting, generic, rehashed, nonsensical, or completely awful such as Emily's best friend. I don't understand why the Steam Team needed to be working in pairs, especially since most of their jobs had nothing to do with the sand sculpture unveiling. Speaking of, why did they get rid of the perfectly fine T-Rex skeleton? Why replace it with something that's going to get ruined when it rains? It would be fun to have a best friend to do my job with too. <sighs> And I don't get why Emily would need a best friend just to deliver some trucks of sand. If she was wondering if she had a best friend, period, I think the closest that comes to mind is probably James. But instead, they felt like making Nia his best friend, even though I have never seen these two interact with each other. This is Henry and Rosie's dynamic all over again. And that they don't have one. Thomas's fuzzy friend. What's it doing? <gasps> no, no, no! Not on my shiny wheels. <sighs> I cannot believe I am living in a dimension where there is a piss joke in Thomas the Tank Engine off-screen or otherwise. But aside from that, I appreciate them continuing on from an episode from a couple of years ago, as if there is GASP CONTINUITY in this show! But the rest of the episode is just... pretty boring. James the Super Engine. This episode is generic as all hell. A normal being wanting to be a hero and rescue people thinks he's not that super after only doing a little things. Then they actually rescue someone and is declared a hero. I've seen this done loads of times in other kid shows, so why give it to a steam train? The big rescue at the end wasn't even that big of a deal anyway. It's just... A coal hopper falling over. I've seen much bigger rescues in the show before. In fact, I did see a bigger one in All Tracks Lead to Rome last season. We had our very own super engine. He was called Rail Rocket. I wonder who he was. Who knows? He could be just about anyone. You seriously didn't know that was James? You didn't recognize the voice? Or the shape? Or the obviously bright red paintwork in this shot? Thomas's animal friends. This is a marketing episode. And the worst kind. It's blatantly promoting this new Trackmaster toy that they came up with out of the blue. Let's take this Thomas toy and put a... Monkey face on it. Swimming in money! There has to be better ways to work your merchandise imagery into the show than this. But I ask you, what can be worse than a marketing episode? Two words. Marvelous machinery. 
I don't even need to tell you how bad this arc of episodes is. I'm just going to show it you, and I'm just going to let it destroy your heart from the inside. Let me make one thing perfectly clear. This is not jumping the shark. I'm gonna say that again. This is not jumping the shark. No, 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 no. This is jumping the shark, coming back, shooting it in the balls, raping it, eating its flesh, consuming its soul, mounting its head on the wall, and then doing the same thing to 12 more fucking sharks just to be safe! I can't... I... I can't even begin to describe this utter... When I first saw this poster for Marvelous Machinery, I thought all of this futuristic crap plastered on it would be part of one of those dream sequences. Something so outside the realm of reality that it could only exist in the engine's imagination. But no. Imagine if one of those insane fantasy sequences was actually canon in the show. Cars built from engine parts that can turn their bodies 180 degrees, flying cars, walking bridges, giant dancing robots, and a fucking jet engine. Oh, but they used a jet engine in season six. You didn't have a problem with it there. But that was the jet engine for a jet plane, put sideways on an old fashioned flatbed for safety reasons, and Thomas's reason for pulling it was to take it to an airfield. This is a futuristic looking jet engine with no established purpose for it being made, other than, in my mind, just to be purposefully used for the railway. Why would anyone need a jet engine? Oh yeah, plot convenience. And all of this had created one of the biggest questions in Earth's history. Do Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster really exist? Who was the one who assassinated John F. Kennedy? What time period does Thomas and Friends take place in? It can't be the current decade, the 2020s, because we sure as fuck don't have walking bridges, flying hovercars, or dancing robots in modern day. Well, there may be a few dancing robots in Japan, but not anywhere else in the world. It can't be far in the future either, because they are still using old-fashioned telephones and things instead of computers. And not to mention they are still using coal here. And it can't exist in the 1950s either, because most of this shit didn't exist back then. It only existed in movies. But wait, it has to be the 50s, because in the other special episode, in the same season, we can see a child Prince Charles and a middle-aged Queen Elizabeth II. Fucking hell. Not only are they purposefully changing geographical areas, but they are also screwing over human history now. I hate every single Marvelous Machinery episode, even the ones outside of the double length ones, with a burning passion because of how much they destroyed this franchise due to the executives at Mattel not caring in the slightest. I'm not saying that it's Ruth herself that has ruined the show's legacy. Her character is... 
okay at best, actually. It's the stuff they are making her do that is ruining the legacy. Destroying any resemblance of realism they had left just from the mere presence of just one of these things. And the Marvelous Machinery arc has got to be the worst Thomas episode in the whole Bwaba era. No, no, no. On the top 10 list of worst episodes of the show. It's not just the inventions that gives it that title. It's the fact that every single other storyline here has been done to death already. Some new piece of technology comes to the railway. The engines are worried that it might replace them. They work harder than ever to prove that they aren't worth replacing. They screw up because of it. They still get everything done on time. They explain their concerns to the fat controller, who ends the episode by saying that he isn't replacing anyone, and that they are all really useful. We have seen this story before. No wonder the series got cancelled after this. They can't even think of any original ideas anymore. And if they do think of original stories, they're just ripping off generic storylines from other kid shows. Why the fuck would Sir Robert Normby be so interested in all of this modern technology? In every single other time we have seen him, he has always fallen in love with the complete opposite of that. Well, okay, he was fascinated with Hugo in season 20, but that was just the one time, and it was the invention of a fellow friend of his. Every single other time, he was fascinated with old artifacts and relics, restoring an old castle from the 11th century that used to be ruled by a beloved king, restoring Stevenson's rocket, one of the first and oldest steam engines ever built, and also Glenn, one of the old-timey coffee pot engines, setting up a dinosaur park in the estate, all about creatures that existed millions of years ago, building a railway museum, a place that houses ancient artifacts of railway history. Yeah, remember that plot thread from season 20 that they suddenly dropped for no reason? So why the hell would he be in any way interested in technology that hasn't even been invented yet? There was clearly no effort put into any of this shit. Sonny is... Fine. He's a kind, helpful engine who is forced into doing something sinister or he'll be in pieces. Yeah, he's basically Skiff 2.0. Except, unlike Skiff, Sonny wasn't given a proper role on Sodor after the events of the special. He's just doing random jobs on the main line during his second chance, much like what Nia was doing in Season 22. And speaking of Skiff wannabes, there are the villains of Marvelous Machinery, Baz and Bernie. AKA, the worst villains I have ever fucking seen. There are one-dimensional villains, and then there's minus 50 dimensional villains. I know there are villains for a toddler show, but that's not an excuse to make them so torturous to watch. Like, I cannot believe how retarded Bernie is. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we're not gonna do any stealing there or nothing. We <laughs> have <laughs> cooks for whole occasions. Uh, and we definitely don't steal nothing. Baz, have you still got the stolen plans? Baz? Yes, Bernie. What's an invention? I am really surprised that this cunt has the brains to remember to walk. Or to speak. Or to breathe. And now, let's talk about the last and final canonical episode in the Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends timeline. The special double-length episode made to celebrate the Railway Series' 75th anniversary. Thomas and the Royal Engine. It's... not too bad. 
It's the best episode of season 24, that's for sure. It still got some pretty shabby graphics, some lazily reused Sodor sets, and they must have spent all of their budget for the Prince Harry introduction. In fact, why couldn't they have him narrate the episode? They had him right there, holding the book and reading the story to the audience. Why not have him tell the story while you still had him? Make this episode truly special in some way. There's hardly any narration in this episode anyway, so it wouldn't have taken that long. Or better yet, why not just cut the narration out entirely? Speaking of things that should have been cut out... Beresford. It feels as if the writers were trying really hard to make this guy the most useless character in Thomas history. Just like in Journey Beyond Sodor, you could have cut Beresford out of the episode entirely and nothing would have changed. Thomas still doesn't know the way to London when he gets to the junction. What I also don't really like are the forced railway series or classic series references. While I think some of them are okay, or at least pretty subtle. Oh, Thomas, my safety valve, it's burst. We left my fireman back at the station. Then I shall be your fireman on this, uh, suspicious, uh, no, bother, uh, uh, oh, auspicious occasion. The rest feel pretty forced. Oh, perhaps this is crew, where Henry went to be repaired. Or maybe Doncaster, where Gordon was built. Little engines can do big things. <laughs> Not the station names again, Gordon. I just wish they would make up their minds on what to call London Station. I tilted my head at the Gordon Goes Foreign reference in particular. I don't get why they would reference a story that has never been adapted for the TV series. Well, they were going to adapt it in season 2, but they cut production on it due to budgetary restrictions. So, the only way the kids are going to understand what Gordon and Henry are talking about is if they just so happen to have a copy of the 8 Famous Engines book. There's no way these kids are going to bother researching about it on wikis or anything. They just use the internet just to watch more of those shitty educational shorts. Owie, owie, owie. Why do you sound like Jake from the Tweenies? And there is the new character of Duchess. Eh, she's fine. She gets anxious to get everything ready, but it leads to her forgetting certain things. A bit relatable, but it's not that much. And I'm not really that much of a fan of her design. Her main build is pretty good, but she is reusing one of Flying Scotsman's tenders, and due to the terrible lighting of the Boaba series, I can't even tell what colour she is. Is she... Silver? Grey? Cream? White? Why not just make her scarlet red, like the other Duchess class locomotives? So, the Royal Engine, while not the best and most honoured way of celebrating the 75th anniversary, is still not that bad of an episode either. The story is pretty good, the pacing is a bit slower, which is much appreciated, and there were a few moments where I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> and all those working on it. Your hands off. Thank you, ma'am. So, while I was putting all I had into reading the entire Railway series for the anniversary, what the show staff did to celebrate it was... Okay, intentional or not, I think this episode is a decent ending to Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> That, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the original Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends series. After the failure of all the Boaba changes, ratings going at an all-time low, and Mattel neglecting to market the show properly or make quality merchandise, a 25th series was never greenlit. And after a few months of hiatus, they instead decided to move on to... What is that? Oh, 
It's just a skunk. A skunk? Ah! Thomas is officially dead, with no hope whatsoever that it can properly come back. Ever. I never thought I could actually survive sitting through the entire Bwaba series again. But you wouldn't blame me for assuming that, right? Only 72 episodes and just one movie, and each one felt longer than they actually were. In fact, they were shorter episodes. I'm not surprised that the show was cancelled after this, because this era was a huge sack of shit all the way, with half of it all being completely pointless episodes, with nothing engaging, interesting, or rewatchable, new characters that have nothing unique or complex about them, shitty forgettable songs, downgraded animation, eye-burning bouncing and tipping, no realism, no momentum, segments that treat the child audience like idiots, a serious lack of continuity or any engaging story arcs and replacing two beloved characters with shallow characters that don't have enough material to be main characters in the first place. While this season did a few good things here or there, like plenty of focus on side characters, a decent anniversary episode, a good chunk of decent normal episodes, and a scene where we got to see all the biggest authority figures in the show all together at the same time, it is all completely forgotten about by the much bigger plague of problems that ruined the show. A lot of interesting ideas with plenty of potential, but executed horribly and lazily. Butchered characters, wasted potential, and doing things that I think should have happened years ago. Like, why did they wait until now to give Emily a number, and not in Season 7 after she rescued Oliver? Why did it take them until three seasons later to give Nia a proper role on the show as the Safari Engine? Why did they wait until now to make Hiro move back to Japan again? If the writers knew he might have been homesick, they would have gotten rid of him off screen in season 17. It's really tragic that the series had to end on such an abysmal note. But that's not how I'm going to remember the show. I'm going to remember it for all of the best things that it did. Seasons 1 to 7, The Classic Era, and Seasons 17 to 21, The Brenner Era. A combined run of 12 seasons of great voice acting or narration, beautiful animation or model work, amazing sets, unforgettable music, and timeless, entertaining, developed, and adaptable stories. I will always love these eras of the show and what it did for me. It gave me the opportunity to write my own stories because this world and the characters that inhabit it are so lovable and interesting that their stories will go on forever. I have already written 12 original stories over on DeviantArt, where I did just that, write interesting stories with these interesting characters and gave them a bit of growth and character display. I will be uploading audio adaptations of these 12 stories in a few months so that you YouTube followers can enjoy them as well. And in the meantime, you should check out other members in the fandom who have also written their own amazing Thomas stories. The Buried Truck, Richard Jordan, NWR1991, Joey Turner, I Love Trains 323. You can find all of it in this playlist I've created. It's full of fans doing their own take on Railway Series continuations, the Classic Series, the Brenner Series, Hell, even some people, like Crane Engine Studios, Thomas Fan 2002, and even myself, are doing our own improved versions of the Big World Big Adventures story, and even original international stories. 
That really shows how amazing a fan base can be. That when the official company that owns the show doesn't care about keeping this franchise alive, then we will, in our own way. Us fans will continue to keep the legacy of the island of Sodor and the Thomas franchise alive for many years to come, because we genuinely care. And it wouldn't have been possible if not for the Reverend Wilbert Audrey and the world he and his son Christopher had created. Godspeed to you both, and to the fans out there who care.